Werner, Gundogan, Grealish and Haaland. Anthony Taylor blows the whistle. Erling Haaland gets the first touch of the match. He kicks off, plays the ball back into his own half. And Manchester City in the sky blue shirts, white shorts and blue socks play the ball all the way back to their goalkeeper in the maroon Edison. Long downfield from him. And here's Tommy Asu restored to the Premier League starting lineup tonight, playing it back to Ramsdale, who knocks it confidently across his penalty area to Gabriel. Then out to the left hand side, where uh, it's played forward by Zinchenko. Big night for him against his old teammates. And Ramsdale then overarms the ball out with a real zip on that. The Tomiyasu who approaches the half lay line, but Grealish is in front of him. And Arsenal go back into the centre of their own half. So uh, last night, if you were listening to Five Live, you had the brilliant noise of San Siro. Tonight, it's the Emirates for this, this big Premier League occasion. I mean, it is a Champions League night tonight, but it feels like the world has come to London for this much anticipated Premier League match. And it is Arsenal who break away with the ball from the left-hand side. Now it's for them, Kedjir on the left, shoots but into the defender and then bounces back to the edge of the area where, where Chaka has a goal for goal, but it bounced up for him and he volleyed it high over the top and wide and across and behind. Goal kick. Chris Sutton. Yeah, I think it's a fast start we all expected from both teams. It's been pretty ferocious, interesting, the way Manchester City have set up as expected with the back three, but... Bernardo Silva just dropping into that left-back role when they are uh, out of possession, but the first effort from Arsenal. And Jacko got a great left foot that he has, but couldn't get his shot on target. I mean, I, I assume Rodri will drop into the right-back position, maybe on the other side, potentially, when, when the ball's on this side, Chris. That could happen. Yeah, or in, it, it certainly he could drop back in yeah. the centre-half. And, you know, I, I think that with Pep's teams, he's, he's very fluid, isn't he? Very, very flexible, but... In terms of reading the game, Rodri, Bernardo Silva, th their decision-making yeah. has to be top, top draw, doesn't it? Free kick for Manchester City, halfway inside their own half, which is played back by Walker to the edge of the penalty area. Ruben Diaz is there. He, he did have a hamstring injury post-World Cup, so he's not had an awful lot of football lately. The, uh, the big number three, Sunday, was his first start since the World Cup keeps his place but now down the right hand side the Brunner can't, can't keep the ball in on the right wing and it's out of play for a throw in to Arsenal 10 yards inside their own half and uh, and the throw is taken back to the edge of the Arsenal penalty area where Gabriel will bring it forward Arsenal had a man sent off in both matches against Manchester City last season uh, Gabriel was sent off in the uh, in the match here and uh, and Chaka was sent off if you remember it was 5-0 I mentioned the recent history between the sides but it feels like it's different this season because of the circumstances because what have Arsenal have done this season and remember they are unbeaten Arsenal here in the Premier League this season while Manchester City have lost their last three away matches including the last one when they were here in North London against Tottenham and Pep Guardiola was saying afterwards, possibly with his tongue in his cheek, that going to North London was like going to Northern Europe for, for Manchester City. It was extremely exhausting. Here is Saka, now playing it up through the middle to Nketiah, and then there's a foul brought back by Anthony Taylor. Free kick, the ch late challenge, I think, on Saka from Diaz. Free kick to Arsenal. Yeah, just from behind, Diaz comes, he just clips Nketiah as he lays the ball out. Nice little ball inside from Saka. I think what's interesting, John, we've been focusing on, on what City bring and, and how Arsenal are going to get at their back three. But I think Arsenal playing out against this formation is very, very difficult. I mean, they had quite a lot of time with the ball at the back there, didn't they? Trying to pick that pass. And it's going to be a real night of concentration for Ramsdale, the two centre-backs, Jorginho, to be able to, you know, select the right pass, wait a pass, have it safe side and just not take too big a risk with the ball in their half of the pitch. Yeah, because of however you describe it at the back, whether it's three at the back, two, three, yeah. whatever, it is 4-1. So therefore, yeah. there are those four. City have got an player. extra man to Here, press in. Here's the free kick for Arsenal. Odegaard plays it over the top, but it's headed away. Back out towards the, the right-hand side for City. And then uh, left-footed ball from Odegaard is over everyone and bounces away out of play for a throw into Manchester City. That was unlike Odegaard, but uh, 
doesn't hit too many passes that are too far astray, but that's out for a throw into Manchester City, just about level with the edge of their own penalty area. So Arsenal nil, Manchester City nil. BBC Radio 5 Live. Uh, we will have commentary, by the way, from the Champions League, from our team who are in Dortmund, another one of the great European stadiums. That is on Sports Extra. Borussia Dortmund against Chelsea from uh, 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock kickoff. Manchester City with Haaland on the right-hand side. Defender slips, Haaland plays it to the right side of the box to Mares. That's pulled back to the edge of the penalty area, but it's actually passed straight back to the edge of the box to Jorginho on his full debut for Arsenal. And he was able to say thank you very much, took possession under no pressure and passed it away. And Arsenal have got a throw, Chris Sutton. Yeah, fitness doubts over Erling Haaland. He looked pretty good there as he weaved his way through a couple of Arsenal defenders. And past Saliba and Zinchenko and had a cute little ball into Mares and crossed the ball in, but Jorginho in the right place at the right time and made the clearance. Erling Haaland, who has scored in just one of his last seven away matches. Erling Haaland scored two goals in the match against Leeds. With six of the last seven away, he's not scored a goal. The top scorer in the Premier League with the, the 31 that he scored now in all competitions. Yeah, I wouldn't be writing him off just yet, John. It's early, Chris. Didn't Did I sound like I was writing him off? Then? I was writing him off early. Did I sound like that? It certainly <laughs> wasn't my intention. Yes, Saka dispossessed by Bernardo Silva. Home supporters feel that he was fouled. Grealish takes it up to the edge of the box, clears it across the edge of the penalty area, and Chaka slides in to take it away from the toe of Mares and put it behind for a corner. But Arsenal are unhappy about that. Uh, did you, I'm, I'm just wondering, it wasn't very far away from where Mikel Arteta was standing. And I think it's fascinating tonight to see what his body language, yeah. how he acts tonight when it's Guardiola in the other coaching area. But it's a corner. I can understand. He's a little bit frustrated because Bernardo Silva, OK, he wins the ball, but he does kick through the back leg off Saka. You probably have to say it was leg before ball in terms of the contact. LBB. Corner taken short by Manchester City over on the far side to Kunduan near the corner of the penalty area. Then square to Bernardo Silva. Bernardo Silva to Jack Grealish, who's got a run in the team. Uh, boos, chorus of boos for him. That usually shows that the opposition do respect you and are worried about what you might be able to do generally. Is that why you got booed, Chris? <laughs> Don't you stop. Just on Arteta's reaction there. He didn't hold back. Good. Well, you wouldn't have expected that he would. And it is one of those grounds, the Emirates, where the two coaching areas are actually quite a long way from each other. De Bruyne flips the ball out towards the right-hand side. Mares is there. Then it comes back to Walker. It's allowed to run, but uh, by being allowed to run by Kevin De Bruyne, the ball ran to Arsenal. And now here's Saka, and this is going to be one of the interesting things of the night. Whether Arsenal are able to get enough of the ball to Bukayo Saka, and whether he's able to attack into that left-back position where Bernardo Silva is currently now. So he is very much in this lineup that Manchester City are in, Bernardo Silva, as the left-back. And uh, Grealish worked ever so hard there to get back and, and double up, and we'll, he'll have to do that this evening, because I think if Saka gets in those 1v1 situations against Silva, he'll fancy his chances. And, uh, and intriguingly, actually, the man who used to be one of the Manchester City left-backs, Zinchenko, who's on the other side, is currently in a midfield position. As the ball's played for uh, Saka. Saka takes on Bernardo Silva, goes down. That's given us a free kick. And uh, Arteta stalks out of his coaching area to the fourth official, uh, waves, his, waves his finger at him. Words were said, it's a free kick. A few yards inside yeah. the Manchester City half. It's the second one. I mean, the first one, the referee felt he got the ball, but that one's just a lazy lunge from Bernardo Silva, who has started the game brightly, but he's got to remember he's playing against Saka, who, for me, 1v1 in terms of twisting out of certain situations, is one of the best in the business. You've got to be really careful. And I mean, Bernardo Silva is playing left back Chris no he's at the moment out of possession he's a left back isn't he whether or yeah, not absolutely in yeah. possession he then drifts into the middle there where he is now but, but what, I mean what what Arsenal are doing and Mikel Arteta they they are pressurizing the fourth official the crowd are getting up every time Silva makes any sort of challenge on Zaka now then I suspect we'll see a yellow card next time Matt yeah no and, and I think that you know you make another foul soon after that one then yeah you're going to get a yellow card in this type of game City playing the ball back to Edison who clears it downfield 
Now Seti have it in the centre circle with Gundawan and then Bernardo Silva now driving from the halfway line. Saka's trying to get there, does so. Whether he got a little bit of the ball, Bernardo Silva went down. No complaints from Manchester City, and the ball was cleared away by Arsenal near the edge of the box. I mean, it, this this system asks a great deal from Bernardo Silva. Yeah, and. Uh, it Credit to, to Saka actually tracking back there, Bernardo Silva on the inside there in that central midfield position, breaking beyond the Arsenal midfield, and Saka got back to his credit, Silva got away from him and made the challenge. Arsenal nil, Manchester City nil. This is BBC Radio 5 Live, listen as well via BBC Sounds, Grealish with the ball inside his own half, won't be too long before kick-off in Dortmund. Uh, that is on Sports Extra, the Champions League commentary tonight. And uh, Haaland now leaps in the centre circle, flicks it on. Bounces for Tomiyasu for Arsenal, who's able to turn and then knock it square in field, where Gabriel had to be quick. Mares was closing him down. Zinchenko now on the left-hand side. Martinelli passes it forward, but Chaka was going one way, the ball went forward, and Manchester City were able to to take possession of it quite comfortably, unchallenged. De Bruyne drops deep inside his own half. Kevin De Bruyne's misplaced cross-field pass. That was cut out by Jorginho. Jorginho through the middle now, and Ketcher with a shot that shoots straight into the, the feet of Ruben Diaz, who was running from right to left across the penalty area and blocked it out for a throw-in. But the error from De Bruyne there, and Arsenal very nearly took advantage. Still nil-nil. Now, here is Jorginho, the number 20 for Arsenal. His full debut, his first start, had around about half an hour in the Everton match, and that's been it so far. I actually I actually thought, John, Jorginho took the wrong option there. Martinelli was through on goal on his left-hand side. He fed the ball to Nketiah, and it was a good challenge, Matt, from Diaz. Very good challenge, but I just felt Nketiah, he, he tried to shoot, didn't he? If he tries to cross that, and he, you've got that one opportunity to centre forward to drag it through the defender's legs and just across the goal, I think he would have been in business, but... I thought it was a great read from Jorginho to cut that pass out. Here's the ball from the left-hand side from uh, Chaka into the area. There is a challenge by Ake on Nketiah, and that is given as a free kick. Was that a, it must have been a high foot from Nketiah on Ake. They don't like it in front of us. There are arms raised and voices raised. But uh, Ake, who is diving down at what, thigh level, it's not, it's not a high foot, it's a low head, and uh, that's why the uh, Arsenal fans aren't too impressed, I think it's fair to say. Is that foul? I don't think so. I mean, if you're going to dive I think it's, it's, it's knee it's high, good, it's good defending, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's brave, but you expect a clump on the side of the head maybe if you're going to go and head it, which is you know, what Aki was willing to do, but it's, it's not a foul for me, it's just play on. Here's Grealish now. 7.30 kickoff, Arsenal nil, Manchester City nil, almost a quarter of an hour pay played. So the, uh, the 7.45 matches will be getting underway shortly. So there are six matches in the Championship. We'll keep you across tonight. And then an 8 o'clock kickoff, Borussia Dortmund against Chelsea. Uh, it is a red, it is a Five Live final score night tonight uh, via the iPlayer and the BBC Sport website and app. Haaland down the right-hand side, tried to play it across, that was intercepted. And uh, Ramsdale then with the clearance back to Manchester City, who are playing from right to left in this first half. So Arsenal attacking towards the, the clock end, the famous clock hanging high above the goal at the stand to our right. And on the ground in the centre circle, Diaz with the ball. We've seen a couple of turns of pace from Haaland so far, haven't we? That little bent run out to the right-hand side of the pitch. I tell you what, when he decides to put the power down and the ball gets put in behind, he is. He's a hard man to catch. He really is so powerful and quick across the ground. Yes, his dad's here tonight, Alfie Harland, who uh, I guess you must have played against Chris, Alfie Harland. Yeah, I think you could bring Matt into that question as well, John. Whoa, 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 whoa. Alfie wasn't quite as quick as Erling. <laughs> as uh, Bernardo Silva takes it down and clears it into the Arsenal half. He was spotted, actually, by uh, a colleague of mine quite early in the evening. And he said, if he's here, Haaland's definitely playing. And so it proved. Here's, here it, here's Jorginho, who plays it out to uh, the left-hand side. Jorginho gets it back now in a central position, and Tommy Asso knocks it back into central defence. It's a good shout, that, John, actually. Mm. Alfie Haaland watch, then. Mm. Keep an eye out for him. He needs to keep himself under wraps. 
as uh, Martinelli plays it back into his own half. Uh, more live commentary tomorrow night, by the way. Barcelona, Manchester United. Alistair Bruce Ball and Rob Green will be there in the uh, the new camp, the Camp Nou, whatever you like to call it. Uh, but it is an early start, that one. 5.45, so drive will finish early tomorrow night. And you will hear that, followed by the uh, England-South Korea international from Milton Keynes. But here tonight in the Premier League, breaks down for Arsenal on the halfway line Grealish now with a little ball to his right to Gundogan out to the right hand side it goes to Mares. Mares into the box on his left foot then turns up, up against Gabriel still going whips it across towards the back post Holland plays it right across the penalty area and then it's cleared away on the point of the six yard box by Gabriel for a throw well all I look at John when the ball's in that position I take my eyes off the ball and I just look where Haaland is where's his movement and he pulled out the back post Tommy Asu kind of sees him but the ball's that good, it's inside Tommy Asu that he just actually can't get to it. And Harlem makes that run and squares the ball back across. But when it's wide, you really have to have eyes in your back of your head with Haaland around. You have to almost grab a hold of him because he just drifts into such good position. His movement, so dynamic. Brilliant movement, wasn't it, to pop up at the, uh, at the back post. And, and Ramsdale, by the way, the Arsenal goalkeeper, has sat down and taken off his boot taken off his right boot so this is a this is a twist if there's going to be a problem with Arsenal's or first a prize goalkeeper <laughs> it's a twist in the story and, uh, and, and while Ramsdale receives the treatment so I'm not sure when it is that he's that he's picked up this injury or how but all of the Arsenal players were called across by Mikel Arteta that's the applause that you heard there because they all ran towards the group of spectators down to our left who applauded them. And, and they're all there, aren't they? All yeah. 10 outfield players are gathered around and Mikel Arteta is doing an impromptu team talk. You know that? It's actually very Guardiola, this, isn't it? Standing, knees slightly bent, feet well apart, talking 20 to the dozen, lots of signals, lots of pointing into chests, orders being given out. Guardiola... Yes, yeah, very, right. very Guardiola, but Guardiola's not doing it with the it's Manchester got, City players. The, the actual original mm. isn't doing it. Guardiola. The original isn't original. Yeah, he was talking about Julius Caesar last week, wasn't he? I looked up another Julius Caesar quote, Chris, bearing in mind it is Arteta and Guardiola, and that was, the greatest enemy will hide in the last place you would ever look. And now he's up against Arteta, his former assistant, who's top of the table. Keep your enemies close, John. Yeah. Keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. Ramsdale's received his treatment, and he seems okay. So play resumes. Nil-nil the score. Five live from the BBC, and uh, over in the left-back position, the ball bounces away off Haaland for a goal kick. So let's just see if ha Ramsdale's going to be okay to take this goal kick. I mean, that... We've got a television screen in front of us here. It's not picked up uh, no. wherever Ramsdale received that he was problem. Going, he was looking at his heel, though, wasn't he? He took his boot off straight away, which was quite bizarre. It's never good when a player has a problem which is kind of like non-contact based. And it, whether or not he's feeling the problem with his heel, we'll have to wait and see how he progresses. De Bruyne plays it through the middle, but uh, Chaka is able to tidy that up. Have you got any Achilles quotes as well, John? <laughs> <laughs> I'll look some up for you at half time so the ball bounces back to Arsenal inside their, their own penalty area after the events of last week comes back to Ramsdale with the ball on the edge of the six yard box Arsenal playing it out from the back when I heard that he was quoting Julius Caesar I was rather hoping that it was going to be infamy infamy they've all got it infamy as Zinchenko now takes it over the halfway line Gundogan no, uh, is there Bernardo Silva actually comes across puts in the challenge and it bounces back over the halfway line. Not sure that whether Pep Guardiola is necessarily aware of the work of Kenneth Williams or not. But Arsenal have it in central defence with Gabriel. Gabriel on his left foot, puts his foot on the ball, looks for the run. Odegaard does so, but Gabriel very patiently plays it back across. And now Arsenal with it on the right-hand side. So we've played almost 20 minutes. Not made a note yet in terms of a clear goal-scoring opportunity been things in the penalty areas Haaland stolen at the back post Chaka at the other end with a volley over the top of the crossbar but Arsenal it's bring because, it up it's because everyone's back. in the middle of the park John 
as as you said they would be <laughs> that's brilliant punditry Tommy Asu on the right long ball over the top this is for the run of Saka but it will bounce all the way through to Edison who as I'm sure you will know very quickly out to the edge of his penalty area and it bounced up caught it above his head so the Arsenal so the Manchester City goalkeeper has got the ball in his hands one more clean sheet for him to reach 100 in the Premier League underarms it out to Ake who is closed down by Saka and uh, and Saka hops away after it was played into him uh, he hops away and then off the field and goes down on his knees and actually punches the ground so that was a, a sore one yeah because he, he blocked it with the outside of his boot he put his left leg across to block the ball and it just little ricochet on his ankle just twisted it round throw into Manchester City which is uh, taken by Bernardo Silva headed back by Tommy Asu then Haaland heads it in field nodded down by Gabriel and now Saliba uh, with Haaland behind him plays it just back into the penalty area Ramsdale a few steps out of the box left footed to the halfway line up goes Ake to head that forward and then Saliba also with a header Martinelli challenges aerially and Zinchenko then takes possession takes a couple of touches actually and then Odegaard lovely lovely from Odegaard to send it forward to Martinelli Martinelli now looking to the left hand side here's the cross but Ake is able to get down the headed away only back to Martinelli try to run into the penalty area blocked back to Zinchenko Zinchenko's ball in and Tetia with a header wide he leapt high six yards out but wide of the right post it's a big opportunity for Arsenal the first big opportunity of the game we've got to say Arsenal's played just before that Zinchenko fizzing the ball into Odegaard and then Martinelli released but as the ball comes out to Zinchenko 22 yards out on the left hand side of the box he feeds in a brilliant ball pace on the ball you just have to concentrate on the connection there and Ketia actually glanced the header wide got to go back across the goalkeeper there Matt yeah I think it cannoned off his shoulder Chris to be honest I don't think he actually made any contact with his forehead which is poor because what, what a delivery I mean as a centre forward it doesn't get much better than that does it to head the ball what a leap as well he almost got too high John yeah Odegaard who was involved in that move Arsenal nil Manchester City nil and Arsenal with it on the left hand side here's Chaka on the left tries to cross it but uh, defender slid in to block it behind Ruben Diaz it's a corner to Arsenal their first corner of the match and uh, and the crowd are on their feet Arsenal Arsenal the cry so players three four five six of them in a tight group around the penalty spot and just as the delivery is about to come in they'll head in all directions which they do now moving towards the edge of the box in its play it comes off the head of Gabriel just goes straight up in the air bounces down it's driven back across the penalty area took a deflection but Edison's able to move quickly across to his left and prevent it from bouncing behind for what would have been another corner so still nil nil interesting setup from Manchester City I mean that was a very zonal defensive setup not even having many players just blocking the Arsenal runners to attack the ball I mean as an Arsenal player if you get a good run at it and the delivery is right you fancy yourself to win against a static defender there's a lot of bodies in there on those set pieces but not too many moving towards the ball no and the Arsenal formation there was was almost like something out of the Roman army wasn't it that Julius Caesar would have come up with as the ball bounces back for Tommy Asu to play it across and he's given it oh and it's there it's there what a finish De Bruyne are onto it the poor back pass, the short back pass from Tommy Asu and De Bruyne, quick as a flash, left foot, that was from 35 yards, clipped it over the goalkeeper and in, and Manchester City are in front, one mistake, one error, one goal for Manchester City. It's a wonderful finish, it really is. Kevin De Bruyne switched on, anticipates Tommy Asu and the back pass to Ramsdale big call Tommy Yasu over Ben White but Kevin De Bruyne spots it early he gambles and then he just has to stay composed and lift the ball over Ramsdale and he does it to perfection left footed Ramsdale he's not to blame he's in no man's land De Bruyne 
isn't going to pass up an opportunity like that. It's a wonderful finish. He's barely had a kick, but the kick which he's had has had clinical as you like. I mean, we were right along the line of that, weren't we? We saw it perfectly. He just he kind of set it off outside of the near post with his left foot, and the ball just curved round perfectly, about half a foot inside the near post. I mean, just look at the replay. Tommy Asu's face. As soon as he hits that back pass, he's got this look of dread on his face because he knows he's underhit it. He's tight to the touchline. I get you want to keep the ball in play and get back to your keeper, but sometimes you just got to stick it in the stand. It's an awkward one. It's bouncing. Grealish is bearing down on him. He's tried to play it back with his left foot and just got it all wrong. It's a really poor error. So Arsenal nil, Manchester City won. And Kevin De Bruyne, I must say, there have been a number of rusty touches tonight from Kevin De Bruyne. But not there. When the chance came, he was in and demonstrating, you know, that speed of thought yeah. that he's got. It's funny we were chatting before the game about his lack of goals this season compared to last season. I mean, he was top Premier League goal scorer for Manchester City last season. Foul, foul on Saka, and it was Bernardo Silva. Another chat, another foul by Bernardo Silva on Saka, and you can hear the reaction from the Arsenal fans in front of us. And Anthony Taylor it's just speaks it, to Bernardo yeah. Silva. He's not getting away with another one, John. Well, that's a, that's a yellow card, Chris, no? After the ball. And, uh, look, what's that? Well, uh, that's his third one. Yeah, I don't that's a yellow card. I, don't, I don't think there's anything been uh, too outrageous from, from Silva, but it can't go on, can it? So 1-0 to Manchester City, and it is the, the voices of the Manchester City supporters, the thousands of City fans who are in the lower section to my right and in the far corner around the, the corner flag who are already now thinking that their team might end the night above Arsenal at the top of the table. Long way to go yet. Manchester City taking the ball down. Diaz forward to Gundogan. Gundogan now slipping as he tried to play it forward towards Haaland. That was just intercepted by Saliba. And now Odegaard on the halfway line. Eddie Nketiah had that chance for Arsenal with the header. Wasn't taken. And then that mistake from Tommy Asu, having been picked tonight ahead of Ben White by Mikel Arteta and Kevin De Bruyne scoring the goal. Martinelli now on the left hand side, Arsenal into the penalty area, takes on the defender, gets the crossover, comes off walk, and Tommy Asu went for the volley, snatched at it though and hit it high over the top from 15, 16 yards. There was a chance for Tommy Asu on his left foot, chance to make a men's read, it dropped to him lovely. I mean, he had a bit of space as well, but. The ball had deflected and was looping out of the air. It's a tough one to keep low, especially on his left foot. And he just didn't quite get over the top of it. So goal kick Manchester City. So uh, Kevin De Bruyne, yes, that is his first goal in 14 appearances. And it means that Manchester City are looking at joining Arsenal on 51 points at the top of the table. But Manchester City, top scorers in the Premier League with their advantage in goal difference plus 35 it is now against Arsenal's plus 27 with the goal that's been scored here tonight Arsenal playing it up towards Saka Bernardo Silva was tight on him near the halfway line but Saka played it back and now it's swung out to the left hand side to Zinchenko gets it down Walker is uh, quickly out there but Zinchenko plays it in field Arsenal and beaten here in the Premier League this season, but 1-0 down, Odegaard to Saka, Saka right side of the box, Ake sat down, Saka plays it across, but it hits Ake and bounces back into the gloves of Edison. He's got to get a shot off there, Saka, it, it is brilliantly worked from Arsenal. First of all, the raking ball in, to Zinjenko, and then a couple of sharp passes, Odegaard to Saka, he may have just been offside, takes the ball on his right foot to shoot with his left foot, and then Ake stands up well but I think Saka's got to gamble there and get a shot off and the chance was gone nevertheless I think the uh, the video assistant referee as uh, Haaland is battling with Saliba who comes out with the ball and also wins a free kick that was a good contest they were one-on-one -on -one there Matt Saliba and Haaland and Haaland Saliba did well yeah stood his ground brilliantly there's a little tiny moment there where you thought Haaland's just going to lever him out of the ball but he dug him really well Saliba Zinchenko has some space on the left oh but wastes the cross 
he blazes it high across the penalty area and behind and into the fans and it's a goal kick to Manchester City he had space he had time there and there's been precious little of that in the match but uh, it is a goal kick for Manchester City Kevin De Bruyne has just been pulled across by Pep Guardiola who's actually walked onto the pitch he's, he's two or three strides onto the pitch <laughs> he knows what he's doing Pep Guardiola don't you think there team 1-0 and uh, they, well, ne they never stay in the technical areas do they no I'd, I'd have a nice bit of picket fencing around there John keep them in Darren England is the fourth official comes across gives a Pep Guardiola a little ticking off and then back he goes and sits down 1-0 up yeah there is this sense at the moment with Manchester City you know this that they've been galvanized by the events of the last week this siege mentality and I think that sort of thing just there that, that kind of plays into it and uh, yeah, totally legitimately to to try and do that as Saka takes it on but uh, Bernardo Silva goes to ground and Saka overhead it downfield in any case and it's out of play for throwing to Manchester City halfway inside their own half Manchester City leading through the Kevin De Bruyne goal just his fourth of the season played back to Ake and Bernardo Silva and Ketio quickly into him Saka then puts a challenge in on Ake who was able to pass it back across the penalty area and Edison clears and, uh, and Arsenal go back halfway inside their own half there, uh, there has been a first goal of the night in the championship Phil Jagielka scored for Stoke City who lead 1-0 against Neil Warnock's Huddersfield Town now and Motherwell winning 1-0 against St Mirren Kevin Van Dien with the goal there uh, free kick here is given for Manchester City challenged by Martinelli on Kyle Walker that the home fans again you can hear their reaction that, that's, that is a free kick it's a a, a high ball but, and Walker gets up to head it and Martinelli just leans into him and Walker falls awkwardly still plenty of time for Arsenal of course I think that the one thing about Manchester City this season so many different combinations defensively they conceded only well they've conceded 26 goals last season 22 this season so Arsenal I think that there are there will be opportunities which will come their way Manchester City not quite the same this season Matt Upson defensively no I'd agree with that I mean I think you know one standout player has probably been Nathan Aki to be honest in, in his individual performances so far for Manchester City have been excellent I mean he's started pretty well in this game but as a unit they're not quite the same they don't have quite the same type of possession though Chris do they so you know being a good team defensively is a massive part of how well you keep the ball and, and they've changed that with the way they play with Haaland and how much longer they hit the passes so I think as a whole you know that they've, they've changed a lot as a team and that's certainly affected them defensively just while Cal Walker has received treatment Pep Guardiola now has taken this opportunity he called across Bernardo Silva and Nathan Aki and then he called across the captain Ilkay Gundogan and he stood with his arm around Bernardo Silva was pointing to him and talking and I presume that means you know he needs support against Saka and uh, Walker comes back onto the field a yellow card and a yellow card for or was he not he, he, he shouldn't he, have been on the field should no, he no he needed to be up uh, well, let back on I don't think they let him back on so he, no. he, he'd not been given permission to no, come back on no for Kyle Walker so Kyle Walker booked for, for coming back on without permission but, but I think he's making the point of like when well, I'm standing there just call me back onto the field how long are you going to make me wait to get back on but I don't think he'd had the nod from the referee, had he? Well, that's, that's, that is a, a letter of the law, yellow yeah. card. It's a strange pass from Kyle Walker <laughs> as well, wasn't it? It was yeah. one of those avid passes, just, yeah. a, just a punt. Arsenal nil, Manchester City 1. Five live, Chris Sutton and Matt Upson here at the Emirates in the lower tier of the stadium, just behind and to the right of the halfway line, watching Jorginho, Arsenal who uh, lost to Manchester City 19 days ago in the FA Cup there was only one goal in that match Nathan Ake the scorer of that one remember and tonight the one goal uh, an unforced error by Tomiyasu 
delivering the ball into the path of Kevin De Bruyne, who did the left, did the rest with his left foot. A super finish, but a bit of a gift. Arsenal with the ball near the centre circle. And Gabriel plays it across to Saliba. Arsenal, one point from the last six available in the Premier League after that defeat in the FA Cup at Manchester City. Here's Zinchenko on the left-hand side. Zinchenko just waits for the ball and actually allows it to come to a stop and then plays it in field. And then there's a flick by Martinelli into the penalty area. And Ketier is after this, but it bounces away. And the referee's brought it back, actually. And uh, Manchester City have the ball at the back. Arsenal nil, Manchester City 1. Uh, the top game of the night in the championship is uh, the 8 o'clock kickoff, Sheffield United and Middlesbrough. And there's been a goal now, Prenti. Yes, early doors, Sheffield United lead 1 0. It's a long throw from Jack Robinson, and Ollie McBurney's headed it in past the goalkeeper for Middlesbrough, of course, Zach Stefan. It's Sheffield United 1, Middlesbrough 0. And another yellow card here for Manchester City for time wasting. 1 0 up in the match, not, at, not near half time, 10 minutes from half time. And they've got this free kick near the edge of their own penalty area and Edison is booked. Can't believe they're resorting to time wasting Matt so early. Matt, was was that Edison or Diaz who got booked there? Well, it was Edison, I, I think. think. It was Diaz who was standing over Diaz the ball. On the I, ball. I think it was Edison. Was it? it? It looked like it was Edison that it was shown to. Okay. But we'll check that. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to believe, isn't it? What, what are we, 36 minutes into the game and 1-0 uh, off trying to see it out. So we've had two yellow cards, one for a player coming back on, Kyle Walker, without being given the signal, and the other for a time-wasting by the goalkeeper. I mean, if, if that comes back to haunt them in some way, they'll have to have a little reflect on that and think, well, what, what real wasted yellow cards they are if one of those, get, uh, one of those players gets sent off. Nathan Ack is chasing Saka back to the halfway line, and uh, it's a free kick this time. Ake, there wasn't a great deal in that, just maybe stood on the heel of his boot. Just, so is just on those two uh, yellows, John, I think the referee got them absolutely spot on. Good refereeing, John. I've stepped in the shoes of referees now. You and have. Should have understand yes, you're, why, you're, they, why they were awarded those. Yeah, you're now much more tolerant and understanding. Throw in for Arsenal. Saka to take this. So it, it's... It's a fascinating aspect of this match, Saka against Manchester City and how City are dealing with it. They're, they're doing just enough, aren't they? Not to give away glaring fouls or yellow cards, but they're, they're chipping away at him. Little niggles, like you said, little stamp on the ankle, bit of a late tackle, little bit of a follow through. The very old, subtle. The Fernandinho, yeah. rotational fouls. Yeah, absolutely, very subtle. Manchester City with Gundogan playing it over the half line. It's a Bruyne. Jorginho is in on Kevin De Bruyne. And Arsenal have possession back inside their own half. New favourite at the Emirates, Jorginho. Who'd have thought that just a few weeks ago? As uh, Odegaard now into the challenge. Bernardo Silva goes to ground. Jack Grealish now. A little change of feet from him. Still halfway inside his own half. And then Bernardo Silva back to Ake, who is unchallenged on the edge of the penalty area. Ake playing it across the penalty area. Edison had to just take it. A little mini sprint there to get to it. It was on target from Nathan Aki on his own goal. The City goalkeeper was able to get there quite comfortably and they have it back inside their own penalty area with six minutes of the first half to play. The big chance for Arsenal was the Enketia header wide. A few other chances as well. But they'll be ruining that mistake by Tommy Asu. But it's given away by Ake now to Nketia. Eddie Nketia through the middle towards Zinchenko. Zinchenko's leaned into by Rodri. Begins to rain now in North London. And Arsenal win possession back from Rodri. Chaka, Granit Chaka, lifting it over the top. And Nketia from the angle. Will it go It's stopped on the line. Ake cleared it off the line. And they're waiting to see if the decision from the goal line technology but I think he'd know by now, and Anthony Taylor has not indicated that it was over the line. Or are they saying that there was a handball in there? It's, it looks like he's saying there's some kind of in, infringement, I feel. Oh, I think he's given a penalty. He's given a penalty for handball, so that must have been the defender sliding in. Well, I yeah. seemed to clear it away from the goal line, but it's... Oh, it's for Edison's challenge on... Nketiah 
So as Edison came out and Ketcher with the shot, and then Edison on the follow through caught and Ketcher, catch him. and that's why it's a penalty to Arsenal. Yeah. Do you know what? I think it's the I, I think it's the right decision. I do, and Ketcher does brilliantly. It's a clever run, left hand side of the box, and Edison commits to the challenge, and Ketcher slid the ball under him, but he does bring and Ketcher down. Does it have any bearing that the it's a shot and the ball's going towards the goal and your momentum, you just but, collide, but, but, Chris. Does, but, it, does that have any bearing on it? But, but it's still a foul and Ketia gets to the ball yeah. first. Yeah. Edison Edison brings him down. Well, well you see them not given though, don't you? you, you, you yes, do. you do, but they should be given. But Anthony Taylor, you know, refereeing the top match in the, in the club game, according to FIFA, last weekend. He's called that as a penalty, and this is this is intriguing because this is only the second penalty that Arsenal have been awarded this season, believe it or not. Now, Bukayo Saka did score that penalty. However, since then, they've signed Jorginho, arch penalty taker with Chelsea, who had the ball. Odegaard was there as well, the captain. It looked as though it was going to be Jorginho, but after much discussion, it is Saka who is going to take this penalty for Arsenal. So there's lots, as they say, to unpack. But first of all, most importantly, the penalty. Bukayo Saka's left foot against Edison. This to level it up. Saka waits. Anthony Taylor still walking and making sure everyone is outside the penalty area. So a crucial moment in this match. Top of the table against the champions. The champions 1-0 up. But Arsenal now from the penalty spot with Bukayo Saka waiting, little steps, left footed, hits the ball and scores! 1 1. Edison dives to his left, went the wrong way, and Bukayo Saka makes it Arsenal 1, Manchester City 1. There's great composure from Saka. Edison had his arm out, pointing to the side which Saka rolled the ball into. Edison went left. Saka went to Edison's right, cool as you like, great composure, I think Arsenal deservedly level, I think it's the correct award of the penalty, game on Matt. Yeah, I mean, for me it was never in doubt from the moment I saw Bukayo Saka place that ball and he had a cheeky little smile on his face and I think when you feel a big moment, you feel real pressure, best thing you could do is smile it re relaxes the rest of your body and for what he's experienced in terms of penalty taking in his very short career already he's the perfect man he's equipped to deal with that situation and didn't he do it well super composed just stroke the ball into the bottom of the net it was brilliant from Saka well if you remember he'd never taken a competitive penalty until the the final the Euro final back in 2021 that has assumed the role of Arsenal's penalty taker even with the arrival of Jorginho and that was superbly put away so Arsenal won Manchester City won and the champions are pegged back so this is the Premier League Chelsea underway in the Champions League in the first leg of their last 16 tie Borussia Dortmund their opponents and in Germany watching John Bennett and it's nil-nil. Confident start though by Chelsea. Two early half chances. Mudrick breaking into the box. Only a great tackle by Schlotterbeck stopped him. Havertz running through one-on-one. -on -one. A poor touch let him down. Borussia Dortmund nil. Chelsea nil. In the Championship, we uh, have told you Stoke winning 1-0 against Huddersfield. You know that Sheffield Wednesday, uh, Sheffield United are winning 1-0 against Middlesbrough. Swansea are in front. Uh, Matthew Sorinola has scored against Blackpool. Mick McCarthy's Blackpool bottom of the championship coming into that. Motherwell now 2-0 up on St Mirren. Max Johnston with their second. And uh, and the ball is out of play for a throw-in to Manchester City down in the Arsenal left-back position. And actually St Mirren have just got a goal back. Ryan Strain makes it Motherwell 2, St Mirren 1. Half-time approaching here in the 7.30 kick-off. It uh, is a throw-in. 10 yards back from the corner flag over on the far side Walker to take this up he comes hurls the ball in over the top of Haaland bounces off the chest of Grealish Haaland shoots that's blocked and then the shot from the far side of the penalty area Ramsdale makes the save but the offside flag actually was up and even if that had found the back of the net reaction save from Ramsdale diving to his left 
the I mean, goal would not have stood. I mean, how different is that, Chris? You're playing against Manchester City, and all of a sudden you're dealing with a long, a throw. Rory Dela long yeah. throw in. Unbelievable. Well, it, it, the way he's mixing it up this season, very different, it's isn't amazing, it? Amazing, yeah. It's Gundogan with the shot, but he was he was offside. What half a foot, something like that. Arsenal one, Manchester City one. Pep Guardiola has morphed into Tony Pulis. <laughs> Here is Rodri taking the ball away from the centre circle. Rodri, six minutes of added time. We're having a couple of lengthy stoppages, I must say, as uh, Mares was fouled by Jorginho. Arsenal, <laughs> Arsenal are hopping mad. Chaka jumping up and down, but it was a foul. That was a foul by Jorginho. And uh, Mares was, was taken down forward and right of the centre circle. It, it hasn't been a, a midfield dominance from Manchester City, has it, in this game? It hasn't felt like that anyway. I think Jorginho has done pretty well so far in the middle of the park. He's put a couple of lovely one-touch passes, breaking lines and, and interceptions. It's, it's a decent start from him, considering he hasn't played that much football lately. Free kick. De Bruyne will take this into the back post, which comes off the head of Saliba, who got up, twisted, headed it away out into the right back area out of play for a throw now Borussia Dortmund Chelsea by the way you can listen to that right now on Sports Extra on your digital radio via BBC Sounds still nil-nil between Club Bruges and Benfica Scott Parker managing in the last 16 of the Champions League tonight here's Grealish Grealish playing it back to Bernardo Silva square from him Rodri quick touch to Walker and then Walker out to the right hand side to Kevin De Bruyne and now Mares is there Manchester City Mares coming forward menacingly but Martinelli puts in the challenge cheers for that then Nketiah tackling Walker the two of them get up tangle again with the ball between them and then uh, there's a run as well from Mares who goes to ground but that's not a free kick Arsenal on the counter attack now with Saka Saka, who's just made it 1-1 from the penalty spot. Saka plays it round Bernardo Silva. Here we go. Then goes down, and here's the yellow card that I think was coming at some point tonight. And it's arrived in added time at the end of the first half for Bernardo Silva. Yeah, he's got a massive problem, Bernardo Silva. Persistent fouling there. Another half to go. And the plan for Arsenal, Mikel Arteta will be keep getting that ball out to Saka. 1v1 situations, keep testing Bernardo Silva out. It, it's clever from Saka, isn't it? Because it, he's got nowhere to go here. Grealish is in support. I think Saka knows he's not going to win the ball, but he just lures Bernardo Silva. He gets him square and then flicks it around the side of him and the momentum takes him into him. And it just looks like a bad tackle where, you know, it's clever from Saka to put him in that, that situation. Free kick then, Odegaard plays it in left footed, that's headed away firmly by Ake, it comes out, Jorginho plays it square, now Odegaard back towards Jorginho, slips it through, uh, Gabriel got a touch, Martinelli slings it across, right footed, but slipped I think as he did so, he's got too much on that, and Walker was able to take it down, and Manchester City have got possession inside their own half, long and forward from Rodri, and uh, Jorginho then playing it back to the edge of his own penalty area where Saliba uh, under pressure from De Bruyne chips it out of play throw into Manchester City just having to get to my feet Arsenal fans on theirs De Bruyne playing it in from the left but over over the top of Haaland and it's all the way through beyond everyone whether in sky blue or red for a goal kick Matt Upson been impressed with Saliba and Gabriel in this first half that have made good decisions, got hold of Haaland, competed with him at the right moments. There's, there's times where you just can't compete with him or you shouldn't and just disengage and just drop off. Or I think they've got that balance really well between each other and Saliba especially. I think physically he's shown that he's a good player and he can cope with that kind of situation with Haaland really well. They've just been leaking the odd goal, haven't they, in recent yeah, matches? They have. Not, not, not kept a clean sheet since the win at Tottenham. As Ake now, as the ball bounces back towards the Manchester City penalty area, but City are able to get it away. Sinchenko uh, plays it behind Odegaard, so Jack Grealish was able to, to take possession and knock it back to the edge of the area. I think everyone, Arsenal-wise, as Saliba now is up against Haaland. 
and Saliba got a touch on that and uh, and actually as he as he challenged Haaland yeah. who took it away from the penalty area he, he's a judge to have fouled him too much contact from Saliba I think he just got that one slightly wrong John just praising how good it was he let it bounce he waited he didn't back himself to go and deal with it the moment that ball bounces and Haaland's running onto you you're in big trouble and he had to just pull him back and foul him yeah he had his arms around him so Anthony Taylor saw that correctly as a free kick to Manchester City and uh, and so City have this free kick on the left hand side awkward customer Haaland you know the ball was bouncing the upper, upper body is so big however Gabriel uh, Saliba managed to get his arms around it and concede the free kick Mares to take this or possibly Kevin De Bruyne they're both there 1-1 one, one the score the Emirates Stadium waiting De Bruyne runs over it Mares plays it in teasing ball headed away and then headed forward bounces up hits the crossbar and then Ramsdale react by getting up and pushing it wide and over and the header from Rodri who was diving in headed it down into the ground it bounced up struck the crossbar and Ramsdale was able to push it away it's a left-footed in swinger and Tommy Yasu heads the ball flicks the ball on it actually comes off Rodri heads the ball down and I think it comes off Nathan Aki it does off Aki's right boot and onto the bar I think Aki should score there it crashes against the bar it just stands up and then Ramsdale pumps the ball over his own bar that's a let off for Arsenal corner then for Manchester City Ramsdale comes and gets a punch on it a falling punch in amongst all of the bodies from the De Bruyne free corner and he's able to punch it out for a throw over there on the right hand side and that is it the uh, six minutes of added time have been played Mikel Arteta turns quickly to his right disappears down the tunnel ahead of Pep Guardiola and it is all square at half time the Arsenal error Tommy Asu's error presenting the ball to Kevin De Bruyne who finished brilliantly to give the champions the lead but then the penalty for Arsenal after Enketia's shot was actually cleared off the line but Edison in coming out to challenge Enketia after the ball was passed him collided with Enketia the penalty was given and it was well tucked away by Bukayo Saka so 1-1 Chris Sutton Matt Upson yes uh, as you were terrible error from uh, Tommy Yasu and, and De Bruyne who'd been really quiet in the first half wonderful finish uh, from him who anticipated where the ball was going to go and then Arsenal I think deservedly level I thought it was a penalty clever run from Nketiah the ball was eventually cleared off the line but Edison crashed through Nketiah and Saka as cool as you like Matt tuck that in and uh, all to play for second half yeah I agree Arsenal deserved to get back in the game it's been a good first half I've really enjoyed it lots of different movements and, and patterns happening on the pitch which you'd expect from both these managers love to look at the game tactically so you know it's perfectly set for a, for a really good second half yeah just checked as well that was that yellow card for time wasting was for yeah. Edison the goalkeeper uh, and actually that was before he conceded the foul for the uh, the penalty but there we are lots to discuss of course there would be Arsenal 1 Manchester City 1 at the break yeah plenty to discuss by the way Bristol City have just taken the lead in the championship at home to Wigan uh, about 10 minutes ago until half time there Bristol City 1 Wigan 1 let's go to the Champions League Borussia Dortmund against Chelsea John Bennett it's nil nil Mark but I think Graham Potter will be delighted with the start that his team has made the Chelsea fans behind the goal certainly enjoying it they've just found the back of the net actually but it was disallowed Reese James with a free kick tight angle swung it in came off Thiago Silva came off his hand so VAR ruled it out before that Mudrik had a good chance surging into the box only Schlotterbeck's tackle stopped him from scoring and Kai Havertz as well should have done better running through on goal his touch let him down a very heavy touch Jude Bellingham is trying to urge on the Borussia Dortmund fans he thinks it's a bit flat the atmosphere so far which tells you that Chelsea have made a really good start it's Borussia Dortmund nil Chelsea nil let's go back to the Emirates Matt Upson and Chris Sutton are there Chris fair that it's all square at half time um, yes I think it, about fair I've, I've been really impressed with Arsenal actually more impressed with Arsenal than I have with uh, Manchester City I know that um, um, you know they hit the bar towards the end of the half but I thought Arsenal you know had the had the better of the play I think it's fascinating the way Manchester City set up as we thought they would before the game and and Bernardo Silva has been exposed in that left back position he does a job for the team you know and is he's doing his best but that's one to watch in the second half that, that those 1v1 situations um, 
with Saka, but you just can't write City off because they have that talent within the team. Uh, I think, you know, Matt has quite rightly said Saliba and Gabriel have, have played Haaland really well in this first half, but, um, you know, Haaland only needs half an opportunity. You can't take your eyes off this one. Not, not often, Matt, that Manchester City will go into the break with only 40% possession. Is that? Wow, yeah. I mean, that... Yeah, yeah, that is. Yeah, that I haven't. Is, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's one of the stats. I haven't just made it up. That's actually uh, surprising, chappers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't just thought. Oh, what can I come up with as a question for Matt? Yeah. I know. I'll make up the possession. <laughs> uh, Arsenal, Arsenal, also, Arsenal also had seven goal attempts compared to City's four. So, so well, it does kind of back up. I suppose that they've shaded it. Yeah, it does. But Arsenal love to play not having the lion's share of possession i think and i think there's something like four or five occasions they've not had the majority of possession this season they've won all their games i think they like that they like to set up like that because they've got such good quick slick passing through they like when the team's high up that it, it enables them to get saka and martinelli in that space 1v1s they get in full rhythm like that so i think that like what chris has said arsenal have done well because that might be playing into their hands a little bit in terms of how they like to play um but the fact that it was, it's 40, I mean, that does surprise me. It didn't feel like that during the game, but you never know with Manchester City when you've got 18 midfield players in the middle of the park, Chappers. You're going to have a bit of the ball, aren't you? But I, I think that yeah. tells us just how far Arsenal have, have come this season uh, under Mikel Arteta. The fact that they are, OK, it's at the Emirates, I get that, and they've had a gr you know, great first half of the season. They've had the little blip, but they've been very brave on the ball all season. Once again, uh, you know, they, they have been tonight. And as I say, I think it shows how far they've come. Um, and just a final one. Bearing in mind Edison was booked for time wasting. Is he a bit lucky he didn't get a second yellow for the penalty? Um, I, d I don't think so. You know, if he hadn't I, been booked I, for time wasting, do you think he'd have got a yellow card I, for the I think, penalty? I think, I think a booking would have been harsh for that. I, I think that he has made a, a genuine uh, a, attempt to, to block the shot or, or get to the ball uh, in, in front of Nketiah. He didn't. It was you know, a missed time challenge. I don't think that that was a, a yellow card in any way, shape or form. Uh, Chris Sutton, Matt Upson, John Murray at the Emirates. We will be back for the second half shortly. Middlesbrough have equalised at Bramall Lane. Naz Premji. Sheffield United won Middlesbrough on Tuba Rackpom with his 18th goal of the campaign. Great work from Marcus Falls down the right. He cut it back and Akpom with a touch to bamboozle the defender and fired low past West Fodringham. Great game this. Sheffield United won Middlesbrough one. Uh, still goalless between Borussia Dortmund and Chelsea uh, and that is on Sports Extra if you want to listen to it. Elsewhere in the Championship, Bristol City lead Wigan by a goal to nil. It's goalless between Preston and Luton. Stoke are one up on Huddersfield. Swansea lead Blackpool by a goal to nil and it's goalless at the Hawthorns between West Brom and Blackburn and as they approach half-time in the Scottish Premiership, Motherwell lead St Mirren by two goals to one. Uh, three minutes shy of half past eight. Here's the latest BBC News. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. With the 5 Live News, I'm Jill McKenzie. Lancashire police say the missing woman, Nicola Bully, has issues related to alcohol that were brought on by struggles with the menopause. The mother of two was last seen in St Michael's on Wire nearly three weeks ago. The new information was released after police said she'd been treated as a high-risk case but didn't explain why. Scotland's First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has announced she's resigning after more than eight years in charge. She said she was worried she'd become a polarising figure and urged politicians to focus more on issues than personalities. Kevin Pringle is the SNP's former communications director. Given that we're in an age of binary politics or a number of different issues, that's bound to, at some stage, attach itself to political leaders. And that's obviously been the experience of Nicola Sturgeon. So she's thought that through and, and presumably come to the conclusion that was just going to continue to be the case. The former Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn says Sir Keir Starmer's decision to ban him from standing as a Labour candidate at the next general election is a flagrant attack on democracy. Mr Corbyn was suspended from the Parliamentary Party in 2020 because he refused to accept a critical report on anti-Semitism within Labour during his leadership.
The UK government will provide another £25 million of aid to help the relief effort after the earthquakes in Syria and Turkey. The money will pay for tents and blankets for homeless families in freezing conditions, as well as medical expertise at a field hospital in a Turkish town. Hundreds of people in Belfast and Dublin are holding vigils in memory of Brianna Jai. The 16-year-old transgender girl was stabbed in a park near Warrington on Saturday. A girl and a boy, both aged 15, have been charged with her murder. And the American actor Raquel Welch has died at the age of 82. Her career spanned 50 years. She first became famous in the 60s and won a Golden Globe in 1974 for her performance in The Three Musketeers. Six, 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 music. The year is 1978. Kate Bush releases her seminal debut album. The Kick Inside. And on the record's 45th anniversary, we're celebrating the icon that is Kate Bush. Six Music's deep dive into The Kick Inside. You can find archive interviews and exclusive performances, as well as playlists and programmes featuring artists she's inspired. She was in her own world that she had created herself. Way, way ahead of their time. For all this and more, open B. BBC Sounds. Click the music tab and scroll to find Kate Bush's Artist Icons collection. This is Five Live Sport with Mark Chapman. A second half of Arsenal Manchester City on the way. One all at half time. They're approaching the half hour mark in Germany. Uh, in the Champions League, John Bennett. Yeah, Borussia Dortmund nil, Chelsea nil. You can hear the Borussia Dortmund fans behind me. They're finding their voices because Dortmund have just had their best chance. Sebastian Allaire, tight angle inside the box, could only find the side netting. Chelsea have been the better side, arguably, but that's probably the best chance of the game so far for Sebastian Allaire. Borussia Dortmund nil, Chelsea nil. Now, tomorrow night, uh, Manchester United play the first leg of their Europa League playoff tie against Barcelona. Kickoff is at 5.45. We'll have that match for you here on Five Live. Uh, Eric Ten Hag says it's a good benchmark for how much progress they've made. Barcelona, in this moment, is playing its best football since several years. But I think it's in the, in the mind of, uh, and the inspiration of Johan Cruyff. Uh, still, you feel it here. And you can see, if you see uh, the game of Barcelona, you see the way of play. And that is yeah, the inspiration of Johan Cruyff. Given the history and status of Barcelona and Manchester United, this fixture could you know, very well be a Champions League final, but it's obviously a Europa League playoff. What does that say about where both clubs are at at the moment? And does it show how much work there is still to be done for particularly Manchester United to get back to where you want to be? Yeah, I think it, that's the truth. As both clubs who are in the Europa League, and I think both clubs have the ambition to be in the Champions League and not even just to be in the Champions League, they want to have a really impact in the Champions League, to be after the winter going semi-finals and finals and win even. But the reality is we are in Europe League and it tells that both clubs they needed a reset and I think we are both uh, on a journey and we are both, I think we are both in the right direction. And so yeah, I think it's exciting to face each other tomorrow night because it will help both clubs because you know where you are, it's a good test and uh, you get challenged and from such tests you get better. Uh, Alistair Bruce Ball, part of our commentary team tomorrow uh, and he's got the gig in Barcelona, lucky you. <laughs> lucky me with a, with a former Norwich player, I got my choice of former Norwich summariser, I went Rob Green. Yeah, I, I can completely understand that uh, <laughs> as well. Um, this tie, although we will talk to another uh, Norwich legend, Chris, in the course of uh, this chat, but this tie, Ali, yeah. so, sums up how difficult it is to judge a tie when it is originally made in the European yeah. competitions, because both sides were, were a little bit hit and miss when the draw was made, and now mm. look at them both. Well, that, I mean, it's the reason, isn't it, Mark, that they're playing at this stage of the competition, you know, but because of that form you're talking about and look at where they are now. And I think that's why you heard both Luke Shaw, who spoke today, and Eric Ten Hag talking about this game being a bit of a, a yardstick for Manchester United, sort of testing themselves against the very best, given Barcelona's huge upturn in form. They suddenly find themselves, you know, 11 points clear at the top of La Liga. And, and I do think as well, you know, whoever comes through this tie over the two legs, we're going to have commentary the second leg as, uh, as well next week. 
you know, in terms of the project that Eric Ten Hag is talking about at both clubs, I think it will really reinforce belief. I mean, they, they both know, Xavi and Eric Ten Hag, know that they are going in the right direction. That That is obvious. But again, I think just to sort of, you know, just bolster confidence to get through a tie like this one. And what's really struck me, actually, Mark, since being out here in terms of chatting to both sets of fans, had just been chatting downstairs to some Manchester United fans who came over on the off chance and managed to get themselves a ticket tonight. I've chatted to a couple of Barcelona fans in the restaurant downstairs as well. Just, just the... What's he laughing at? I, I have no idea. <laughs> just, 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 to just Barcelona fans. Yeah. Come on, what they, did you say? Oh. In English, Chris, they've got good English over here. I've not got the Spanish. But, 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 but what's, what's really, for more? <laughs> <laughs> what, what what's really struck was me? It? It's, it's attached to the hotel, Chris. Yeah, but, yeah, but what type of restaurant? What do you mean? It's a Spanish restaurant. Yeah, but they don't necessarily have to have just Spanish restaurants. Listen, listen, Barcelona. let me get to the point. Let me get to the point. The point is, I've been really struck by the sense of anticipation about the tie because of the way the two teams are playing, because of the, the, the shared history between the clubs, and particularly because we are, we are talking about a Europa League playoff game. Now, now, you know, were this against pretty much any other club, I don't think these, these two sets of fans would be bothered. I mean, look at the Europa League last mm. season. Barcelona fans didn't turn up for the home game against Eintracht Frankfurt and suddenly found 30 35,000 Eintracht Frankfurt fans in the stadium. It is very different uh, for this tie and this game tomorrow night. I, I wonder, Chris, as well, from a United point of view, the, the positive, I suppose, is that they have Casemiro back, who's, who's been suspended uh, from recent league games, but they don't have Lissandro Martinez for this through suspension. And you could see when he came on at Ellen Road uh, on Sunday, the difference he makes to the team's distribution. Yep, yeah, I think so. That I mean, that probably means Luke Shaw will will go in and uh, and, and play as a left centre back. Um, but no, Martinez. I know there were doubts when he first came over uh, because of his size, but he's fitted in really well. I mean, I think a really interesting player tomorrow tomorrow night is uh, is Frankie De Jong and that whole story. You know, everybody thought he was going to rock up at Manchester United, but by all accounts, he's uh, he's been very good this season, Bruce, hasn't he? For yeah, he has. He has. Eric Ten Hag was, was asked about him. I saw the Barcelona keeper Ter Stegen uh, talking about him earlier in the week as well and talking about sort of trying to get a pair of handcuffs to sort of chain him to the railings at the club to make sure he didn't leave. So it's, it's another sort of fascinating little storyline in the game. And he, he's been brilliant for Barcelona this season. Uh, we'll let you go back to uh, chatting to Barcelona fans. Thank you very much, Alistair Bruce Ball gracias, with us. Gracias. He's, <laughs> gracias. He's part of our commentary team. Uh, tomorrow night, full commentary of Barcelona and Manchester United from 5.45 in the Champions League tonight. Chelsea in Dortmund. John Bennett. It's 0 0. Chelsea should be ahead. It was laid back in the box to Jao Felix. Should have got it on target. It was over the bar. Borussia Dortmund 0, Chelsea 0. Fascinating 45 minutes ahead at the Emirates. One all at the break. Here are Matt, Chris, and first of all, John Murray. Thank you, Mark. Arsenal 1, Manchester City 1. No changes, no substitutions at half time. Anthony Taylor just waiting for the signal. Uh, they've got to move the flamethrowers out of the way before the second half can get underway. Unusually, we actually had flamethrowers at the start of the second half. I'm not sure I've seen that before. Just to but be clear, John, they're not human flamethrowers. No, they are boxes full of flames. Uh, so Arsenal, Ramsdale in goal, Tommy Asu, Saliba, Gabriel and Zinchenko, Jorginho and Chaka, Saka, Odegaard, Martinelli and, and Ketia, and Manchester City with Edison, Walker, Diaz, Ake and Bernardo Silva, Rodri, Mares, De Bruyne, Gundogan, Grealish and Haaland. Right, flamethrowers have re been removed. There's the whistle. Second half begins. And Arsenal played all the way back to the man in yellow, Ramsdale, who was beaten by that De Bruyne goal in the first half. And here he is, De Bruyne, playing at Ford, looking for the run of Haaland, but the famous understanding doesn't work this time. And Arsenal are able to clear it away on the edge of the box. Bernardo Silva now surging forward. Gundogan heads it out to the far side. Bernardo Silva can't keep it in. And we'll get a word for the first time in the second half from Matt Upson as well. Early little tester there, again, from Saliba with... Harlem playing the ball inside to De Bruyne who just tried to flick it around the corner in the space behind and again the moment Harlan laid that ball off I just love Saliba's reaction he didn't just stand and watch he just dropped straight back into the right place was able to get his body across and, and intercept the ball and I think that's going to be key in this second half as the space just opens up legs get a little bit more tired you've got to stay tuned into that running behind so choice of listening for you tonight, Premier League here on 5 Live, the top two, Arsenal 1, Manchester City 1, 
Arsenal hoping this season is going to see them win the league for the first time since 2004. Manchester City, their sights are on three in a row, not been done since Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United team. This is on Five Live. Borussia Dortmund nil, Chelsea nil is live from Germany on Sports Extra. And uh, Arsenal with the ball in their own right back position. It's shepherded out of play for a throw in. Haaland up against uh, Saliba. And it is a, a throw in to the home side that Tomiyasu is going to take. That was one of the big calls tonight. Tomiyasu chosen ahead of Ben White, who's on the bench. There was a thought Trossard might start the game for Arsenal, having scored at the weekend. But he's he's on the bench again tonight. That I suspect we'll see him, Matt. Don't you think? Yeah, I think that might be part of the attraction, John, which is never good for a player. But oh, Arsenal are taking their time, and in fact, well, he had to, he had to Anthony Taylor having shown a yellow card to Edison for time wasting in the first half. He has now shown one to Tomiyasu for the same reason. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's trying to waste time there, do you, Chris? I think he's just not got any options to throw the ball. City have pressed right in. Well, was, was it because of that or taking it from the wrong position? But slightly baffled with that one. Anyway, he's taken it now. And Manchester said he played all the way back to, to goalkeeper Edison. He, he's put himself under pressure now, or... I necessarily think that was that was fair, but you know, up against Grealish, we know he likes to run and Well here is Grealish running inside his own half actually, halfway inside his own territory, but plays the ball under pressure out to the right hand side, Walker over the halfway line, Rodri comes up, Rodri, he takes it four or five yards further on, then gives it to Mares down here in front of us, Manchester City in the second half, playing from left to right, and in possession now in the centre circle. Sky blue shirts, white shorts, blue socks. Arsenal wear first choice colours here at the Emirates Stadium, the red and white. And it is Grealish who gets away from Tomiyasu down the left hand side, but then checks back. Got two men on him now. Saka comes back. A flick from Grealish. Bernardo Silva is able to take possession. Dummies the cross. Odegaard went with Bernardo Silva. Bernardo Silva to the byline, gets the ball in. It's actually headed away by Haaland, who mistimed his jump. And uh, however, he was able to find a teammate. And Rodri, then to the right-hand side, and Manchester City go back to Diaz in the centre circle. Bernardo Silva again. Get an update shortly from Germany on Chelsea's latest, approaching half-time there, 8 o'clock kickoff. It's 7.30 start here on a uh, quite a mild evening, actually. We have had a, a shower of rain, Manchester City in possession with Diaz, just waiting for that ball, but Arsenal static, standing in their positions, waiting for Manchester City to force the issue. Rodri, Rodri to the right-hand side to Walker, Walker then to Mares. No, poor touch by Mares, deflected out of play for a throw into Arsenal. So we can bring in John Bennett from Dortmund. Chelsea have hit the bar, John, it's 0-0. João Felix passed one defender after a great ball by Havertz, but his shot was high and hit the bar. It's Borussia Dortmund 0, Chelsea 0. And if you listen to Sports Extra now, you'll hear Mark Scott and Leon Osman commentating on that match next to John in the Westfalen Stadion. Arsenal having taken that throw, Martinelli in danger of losing possession. Mares, Zinchenko then goes back across his penalty area to Ramsdale, who takes a touch and then passes it. Yellow shirt flapping out to the right hand side where Tommy Asu now forward from him to Saka. Saka with Ake putting the pressure on, but Arsenal are able to play out of it. And now Granit Xhaka did not go for the early pass. He might have done. They were all calling for it, Odegaard. However, here is Martinelli now on the left wing. Martinelli down into the full-back position. Mahrez comes back with a half a challenge. And then he finds Zinchenko. Zinchenko, head down. He goes for the byline. Then cuts back and then takes it further away towards the corner of the penalty area. Zinchenko again. But Mares does well to put in the challenge and comes out with the ball. Really good defending from Riyad Mares. Didn't dive in, got his body shaped well and actually just manoeuvred Zinchenko off the ball. He's a little bit indecisive there, oh, Zinchenko. Oh. There's uh, a little bit of uh, a to-do between Kevin De Bruyne and Mikel Arteta as the ball bounced into the, the Arsenal technical area. Kevin De Bruyne moved across Arteta, who, who stepped into the way, and there was a little bit of a shove, just a little shove, 
not much more than that. And, and uh, well, Arteta he kicks put the ball. Hands on his chest and pushed him away. But Arteta actually kicked the ball away yeah. from Kevin De Bruyne, who wanted to take a quick yeah. throw in. So we understand De Bruyne's frustration there. Naughty from Arteta that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. He's just rolled the ball away. De Bruyne is trying to get the ball quickly. Arteta just knocks the ball behind and expects Kevin De Bruyne just to suck it up. I don't think he's going to do that. He's frustrated. He wants it quickly. Yeah. Wants to get the ball back in play. His former assistant manager yeah, for three and a half years at Manchester City, Mikel Arteta. But uh, it's a different ball game now. And uh, it was all all calmed down. You know, perhaps if they weren't so familiar, that might have actually conflagrated. But anyway, we'll never know. Free kick to Manchester City on the right-hand side. Arsenal 1, Manchester City 1. This is BBC Radio 5 Live here at the Emirates for the big match in the Premier League. We've had to wait until February the 15th for it. But here we are, all square. De Bruyne takes this in. He's got too much on that. It's bounced away beyond everyone. And Tomiyasu races out into the full-back position and volleys it clear. Bernardo Silva, who had Saka with him, so just very quickly got rid of it back to Edison. Running through the latest scores in the championship in a moment, but here the ball finds Mares who come back from an offside position. So the latest in the championship, Bristol City winning 1-0 against Wigan. It's Preston nil, Luton nil, Stoke 1, Huddersfield nil, Swansea 1, Blackpool nil, Sheffield United 1, Middlesbrough 1, and West Brom nil, Blackburn nil. And it is Manchester City in possession inside their own half, Crystal. I, I don't think I've ever seen a goalkeeper as good with his feet as, as Edison. <laughs> the pass he hit there, pinged, what well, must have been 60, 70 yards. I mean, phenomenal ball to Mahrez, who was offside, but all the same, what a left peg he's got, Edison. Oh, the ball bounces away from, uh, from Odegaard who put in the challenge on Bernardo Silva and it bounced out of play. Manchester City throw, Bernardo Silva is making absolutely sure he takes this from uh, the right place or thereabouts. Takes the throw up towards Haaland, but Saliba clears that away. Kanji's coming on for Manchester City or has just been called back from warming up. So it'll be interesting to see how they shape up. Manchester City with Diaz, one of the central defenders. The Kanji came on for Diaz on Sunday against Aston Villa. Bernardo Silva playing it back to, to Edison, just holding off Odegaard. And then off he goes into the left-back position again, very left-back position for Bernardo Silva. Gives it to Rodri. Bernardo Silva again, long left-footed from him, but that's over the head of De Bruyne and Arsenal will, will very happily say thank you very much and take possession again with 10 minutes almost 10 minutes played in the second half and and still 1-1 De Bruyne giving Manchester City the lead and Bukayo Saka equalising from the penalty spot up towards Nketiah Nketiah who won the, the penalty after Edison came out of his goal and collided with him Diaz fouls Nketiah and it's a free kick just to the right of the centre -side. that's a good ball from Saliba I don't think Arsenal maybe have hit that ball enough because there's so many Manchester City shirts pressing high to stop them playing out it really is on just to flip that ball into Nketiah who's kind of 1v1 with Diaz and he gets his body in the way and he's it's a big part of his game this season Eddie Nketiah it's for me that he's just holding the ball up so much better than what he used to he's got a bit more physicality about him I think that's on to relieve the pressure at times, John. Just simply that straight ball into the front because there's a big space in front of him. Ball forward from Jorginho, but Nathan Aki was able to move on to it and pass it back to Edison, who's given it out to the far side, but Aki can't get there. It's out of play for a, a throw-in that is taken quickly by Saka, and Saka gets it back on the right. He's up against Aki, takes it to his left. Then Jorginho's ball! low but Edison drops on it and Nketiah was there if there'd been any mistake from Edison but he held it securely yeah they're terrified of Saka on that right hand side picks the ball up on the byline jinks back in on his left foot feeds a lovely weighted pass to Jorginho edge of the box he just helps the ball in a little off target and Edison gathers here's Jack here is uh, Jack Grealish carrying the ball forward cutting in field but he's passed it behind Mares. And Mares turns and looks at Grealish, and Grealish turns, and there's a bit of finger pointing there. 
Body language not great. And it's cleared away by Arsenal. Look towards Nketiah. Walker in with the challenge. That's bounced to, to Haaland. And there's a, a tug of the shirt on Gabriel. The two of them have gone down together. It's a penalty. Well, Arsenal are incensed. And it's a yellow card for Gabriel, who has conceded the penalty. I mean, there was wrestling there. I have to say my view, it looked like six of one yeah. and half a dozen of the other. But referee Anthony Taylor has seen that as a penalty to Manchester City. I've got to say, I'm with you, John. I think Gabriel gets too tight initially. Haaland uses his body brilliantly. Here's one. I think it may be offside. The initial ball from Walker That's... into the right-hand channel, I think. Well, they, 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 they wrestled outside. outside the box, and when they then went into the area, I think it's the legs. It's all very gangly yeah. and awkward, and mm. I think it's the legs. He falls into Haaland, who goes down. But as Chris has said, maybe the key thing is the uh, the yeah. initial ball to Haaland. He may well be in an offside it's, position. It's from a tackle, so it's wide, and there's a tackle comes in. I think it's Carl Walker. He tackles the ball, and and Haaland is in an offside position. From, from what I see on a free, I haven't seen the lines, but I haven't seen the lines yet. It, it just caught Gabriel out. He didn't expect the ball to come straight back at him as he's coming up. They're now drawing the lines. We're about on the to replay. see it on our little screen here. He looks and offside with though, a John, naked eye. It looked as though Haaland, when the ball was played through to him by before the wrestling began between Gabriel and uh, and Haaland, and now they're zooming in on it. They're zooming in. Well, they've zoomed to the wrong place. Hang yeah. on, now, let's go right now. It's back to the right place. And we're going to see the lines in a moment. And I mean, unless I'm very much mistaken, as we all agree, that's going to be offside. Yeah, it's so hard to, to determine the contact on, on the ball, is it? Because it's a tackle, it's quite a wild swing from Carl Walker as he just goes to tackle the ball right on the, on the touch line. And you look at Gabriel's body position, he's just not expecting that ball to come back at him, which is why he gets caught out. And I agree, Haaland just is too strong for him. And it is a penalty. I think the reason that this is taking such a long time was that the initial pass was from Kyle Walker near the halfway line, so it was a long pass. Offside. So they've had to make sure. Yeah, there we are. Graphic correction has come up. I'm not sure I've seen that before, but that means it's not a penalty. Haaland was in an offside position, and therefore it's a free kick to Arsenal. And also that yellow card yep. for Gabriel has been over. Well, it's been chalked off. So Gabriel is uh, is not booked it's not a penalty it's a free kick to arsenal and it's still 1-1 one, one. And, and i think also another interesting aspect of that is after the the shocking weekend for var they took a long time over that there was no rushing that yeah they probably remembered to draw the lines and draw them straight John, but I, I just, been, I no, just nothing but praise from you this evening. For <laughs> referees I, and VAR, Chris. I just yeah, sense with easy. the, I just sense with the change with the PGMOL, there was a, there was a feeling that decisions needed to be done quickly, which perhaps was one of the reasons that we ended yeah. up with what we saw last weekend. Definitely, I completely agree with that. I think it's rushed. Feel under pressure with the time because it takes when you've got multiple checks, it's going to take yeah. two, three minutes, John, isn't it? And yeah. that was a good what? Rushing, two, increased pressure leads yeah. to human error mistakes and that's what was that two and a half minutes roughly you'd have to say two minutes to look at that it's quite a long time yeah but we've got to get it right on a night like this what, High what, stakes. I, what I will say is for Gabriel there that is the perfect little live nut that little nudge to say hey you've got to tune in and it doesn't matter if it's a tackle doesn't matter if Arsenal are in possession of the ball. You've got to be ready for that ball to get over your shoulder straight away. And he just switched off for a split second there. And interestingly now, as a follow-up, um, inside the Manchester City half, an aerial challenge here, Chris Sutton. And, and Haaland, I think, has caught Gabriel. I mean, it was, he was being sandwiched by two Arsenal players. And I think it was the arm of Haaland has caught the, the back of the neck of Gabriel, who has gone down, and now he needs treatment. <laughs> I think he's just using his arm to uh, to, to fend as such, and it, it's not that he, has, he throws an elbow or anything. I think that he's perfectly entitled to use his arm in that manner. His arm is actually quite low. Gabriel stoops to head the ball, and uh, he has a little look though, Chris, doesn't he? he? Knows where he is. He's, well, he's. I think he's entitled to uh, to try and use his body and, and win the ball. Incidentally, uh, in the change now, it's Mares who's coming off and Akanji's coming on. So Mares off and Akanji on. Uh, but just first of all, after what happened on Sunday when Mares took the penalty, not Haaland, did anyone see who was going 
who was shaping up to take that penalty for Manchester City. Mm, no. Me, did, did you, No, John? I didn't. I didn't. But I would, it'd be interesting. That's an interesting call as well. But what about this, then? Akanji on? Yeah, I, I mean, this... I don't think this is any great surprise because, you know, Bernardo Silva, we talked about in that left-back position, we, we wondered before the game, would Pep risk? Hang on a minute. Ball played forward for Haaland for Manchester City, 25 yards out. Now slips it forward, but he went left, Gundogan went right, and Arsenal were able to clear through Tomiyasu. And so Aki's gone into the left-back position to try and take care of Saka. And Bernardo Silva has now moved across from left back to right wing. As Grealish takes it forward towards the byline, Tommy Asu in with a challenge. Referee Taylor says final touch was off the Manchester City man. It's a goal kick to Arsenal. And, uh, and that's had a yellow card. card for dissent from yeah, Grealish. For, from Grealish. I think Grealish has walked back, said something to the referee. And he's got the yellow card out and he's now having a word with, with Gundogan as Grealish is still complaining. But I, I think that, that switch we've just seen it makes total sense, doesn't it, Chris, really? Just to go to a back four and just say to Nathan Aki, this is your job now. Left back, 1v1s with Saka and, and be solid as a back four. Saka's capable of you know, 1v1 yeah. situations going past anybody. But, yeah. you, you know, you, I think, you know, we, we all feel that Aki is better suited in those 1v1 situations against Saka. So Arsenal 1, Manchester City 1. Still Borussia Dortmund nil, Chelsea nil in the Sports Extra commentary match live from Germany. Still Club, Club Bruges nil, Benfica nil as well. And tomorrow night commentary on Barcelona, Manchester United from 5.45. Early kickoff in the Europa League knockout round throwing that uh, Ake will take Arsenal fans are saying that he's stolen some yards up the left hand side but throwing was taken put out of play another throw into Manchester City almost halfway inside the Arsenal half Ake take this back into his own territory oh and Diaz is caught there by Saka he, he cleared it away there's a high foot near, and the Manchester City players are demanding a yellow card I, I think they're Saka demanding more but that, that you know it shouldn't be more it's a bouncing ball and Ketia raises his boot to, to try and block the clearance. It was, D, was it Diaz? Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, he, he catches him. He's trying to block the ball. I think it's a yellow card. It's no more than no. that. But the way the Manchester City players, he overreacted. That's not on. It's just because his studs were up, wasn't it? But like you say, it's a genuine attempt just to try and tow the ball away before Diaz gets there. But he, it's just a fraction too late. Diaz is OK didn't need treatment and it is yellow card for Nketia and uh, Pep Guardiola just down in front of us has been goaded by the Arsenal fans behind him turns around and glares at them and then ignores them brown hoodie tonight Arsenal 1 Manchester City 1 Diaz drives this free kick long to the edge of the area where Zinchenko heads it back to Ramsdale and he was able to quickly gather it to his left to 1-1 the score I mean just look how high Manchester City are when I mean, Ramsdale has that ball all of a sudden De Bruyne, Gundogan, Silva, that Grealish they all just pushed in as Ramsdale looked to distribute the ball early but there's no space to play out Ooh, and they're doing that and it's played forward by Gabriel and then Zinchenko plays it infield and hits a Manchester City man bounces out of play and Zinchenko just waiting for the ball to be thrown back to him just tries to whip up the crowd down here to our right didn't take much doing still 1-1 so Arsenal would maintain their three-point lead at the top Manchester City have played one more match as well remember throwing taken Chaka volleys it over the halfway line and, uh, and Saka backing into a Kanji they're claiming that he was being held Referee waves play on, Saka to Odegaard, Tomiyasu on the overlap, Tomiyasu now, his ball right across the six-yard box, and Ketya sliding in, couldn't get a touch, he ended up in the back of the net, but the ball in the full-back area, now it's played forward by Jorginho, takes a deflection, and Walker's able to see it behind for a goal kick. Great advantage, wasn't it, from Anthony Taylor, let the play go on, and Ketya was clearly fouled by Akanji, and Saka moves the ball outright, 
Tomiyasu on the overlap. Oh, it's a good ball. I think Nketiah was offside yeah. anyway, but it wasn't far away, and Nketiah there. I mean, it came from that hold-up play from him, though, Chris, didn't it? We've talked about. I mean, how well did he do there to get hold of that ball? I mean, just to use his body, get in the way of a Kanji. You wouldn't have seen Nketiah do that 12 months ago. Right. Arsenal's top scorer this season, Jesus, he's here tonight, We've seen pictures of him, Partey as well by the way, Thomas Partey ruled out with a thigh injury but he is here watching on and uh, Arsenal take the throw even though Chaka is, is down on his knees on the halfway line, Arsenal get the get play moving again, Ramsdale with a, a clearance, Odegaard still inside his own half then, challenge on Tomiyasu, Manchester City have got it back, Grealish running goalwards and then Saka tackling back all over the back of, of Grealish, that's given us a free kick, Arsenal protest about this one, but free kick to Manchester City out towards the left hand side. Yeah, I think it's shoulder to shoulder and Grealish, you know, I think he's the master of simulation I do, goes down so easily. I think Saka's entitled to lean into him, Grealish leans into him, Saka's stronger, Manchester City get awarded a free kick, I can tell you. Is there a tangle of legs there as well? I, oh. I, think, I think the legs tangle, but I think Saka's just slightly behind Jack Grealish, shoulder just a fraction shoulder, with the legs. On. The shoulders are there, but his legs behind him. I think they've just tangled it. It, 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 doesn't, looked, it doesn't take much for no, Grealish no, 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 to, no. But, to go over, does but it? But it, it looked a lot worse than what it was, I think free kick then nevertheless De Bruyne to take this Arsenal's line is on the edge of the area so it's out towards the left hand side De Bruyne the only candidate to take it in comes the free kick and it's headed by Ake comes off Ramsdale bounces down to Kanji that's blocked on the line and Arsenal get it away and they are living very dangerously there one block one save could have gone in easily but it it remains 1-1 well, I just wondered whether Ake had made his run too early. He did do. I think it was Rodri with the header. Bounces in front of Ramsdale. Sits up, hits Ramsdale on the shoulder. And then Jorginho, right place at the right time. I don't think the goal would have stood. Yeah, I think uh, had it come to it, had the ball ended up in the back of the net, that would have been rolled. Given away by Zinchenko. Bernardo Silva across. Haaland's onto this, Ramsdale comes out, and Ramsdale's able to grab the ball off the feet of Haaland. What a reaction, Aaron Ramsdale, absolutely brilliant, sloppy play from Zinchenko, too casual with the ball, it's a poor pass, he tries to play back, but look how quickly the Arsenal goalkeeper reacts, he gives Haaland absolutely no space, comes all the way out, gets low and just smothers the ball, brilliant reaction from Ramsdale. Zinchenko against his old club, he must have had his heart in his mouth, but it's still 1-1. And now Zinchenko is coming forward with it in that midfield area. And now to the left-hand side, to uh, to Chaka. Still no Trossard. You'd think Mikel Arteta must be thinking of, of him. Martinelli has been quite quiet in the match. And then uh, Saka goes down again near the edge of the box. Bernardo Silva clears. Anthony Taylor's not having that as a free kick. It's been a, it's been a testing match, this. Anthony Taylor, having just come back from Morocco, refereeing the, the Club World Cup final at the weekend, has, uh, has had to be on top of this. People will debate whether that should have been a penalty in the first half for, uh, for Arsenal, but he was very definite. Arsenal with the ball in front of their own penalty area. Knocking it across to Gabriel. Little pass to Jorginho. He turns Jorginho on his full debut for Arsenal through the middle. Odegaard now to the left hand side. That's taken on by Chaka. And then Chaka overhits his ball for Inketia by, by some distance actually. And it's through for a goal kick. And Mikel Arteta suddenly is all animation there after seeing that error from, from Granit Chaka. And now uh, all manner of all manner of gesticulations from Arteta what, what does that mean he's now slapping his hand on his knee waving his arms pointing it's all out towards Tommy Asu is what it you mean you can't understand that John? <laughs> hey, listen. I tell you what they did do they played out brilliantly didn't they Odegaard yeah. going yeah. really deep to get the ball very courageous on the half turn and they played to the final third and it's just that final ball from Xhaka 
He overweighted, needed to take a little bit more care. Phil Foden's warming up and 1-1 uh, the score. Still nil-nil between Borussia Dortmund and Chelsea in the Sports Extra commentary match. Five Live Sport on air till half past ten tonight, so we'll have all of the reaction. And if you don't hear it later, it'll be on the Five Live Football Daily podcast, which you can get from BBC Sounds. Arsenal give it away, Gabriel Bernardo Silva plays it through, Haaland is on to this, Haaland square, Gundogan square, Grealish right foot, 2-1 Manchester City, and Jack Grealish races away and slides on his knees, and Manchester City have restored their lead, the champions 2-1 up here at Arsenal. Yeah, another mistake from Arsenal. And Manchester City exposed him. I think Gabriella was, who was sloppy in possession. And Haaland could have gone himself, actually, when the ball was slipped into him in the right-hand channel. He didn't. He fed the ball to Gundogan, who in turn was so aware of where Grealish was, just drifting in off that left-hand side. And a powerful right-footed finish into the far corner. Past Aaron Ramsdale. And Manchester City, I think, second half. They have been the better team De Bruyne is in an offside position as the ball is fed through to Haaland Haaland isn't really clever from Gundogan wonderful awareness I think it may take a slight yeah, deflection Matt yeah it does Grealish tries to go across Ramsdale oh, and that does for Ramsdale the deflection it. I think Ramsdale saves it Tommy Arsu coming across it gets a little nick I think Ramsdale would get a hand on that Chris to be honest looking at that angle but it's about that mistake isn't it from Gabriel so similar to Tommy Asu in the first hand with the ball I mean he's trying to play a pass there that just isn't on and I get he's under pressure he's either got to go back to Ramsdale or just try and put the ball out of touch and I know that looks scruffy and it doesn't look right but the one thing it is is, is that it would be safe and they just haven't made the right choices in this game Arsenal we spoke about it before the fine lines of managing the game making good decisions on the pitch and Arsenal have got two decisions badly wrong and it's cost them two goals and Jack Grealish scoring for Manchester City for only the third time this season wild celebrations it was at the end where the Manchester City fans are he was able to run away slide on his knees Britain's most expensive footballer and he enjoyed the moment that's for certain so in this match between first and second in the Premier League Manchester City lead by two goals to one and in the match between the teams second and third in the championship, Naz Premji. It's the side in third that leads. Sheffield United one, Middlesbrough two, right at the start of the half. Cameron Archer, six yards out, left-hand side from close range. Lovely finish. A message that said, happy birthday, Dad, was part of the celebration. Sheffield United one, Middlesbrough two. So 2-1 two, Middlesbrough lead there. Sheffield United, who are on a long 13-match unbeaten run. But 2-1 down to Middlesbrough, who are in good form. Arsenal, Arsenal facing possibly their first home Premier League defeat of the season here. Unless, unless, Chaka now on the edge of the area. Chaka couldn't take it past Diaz, who actually went to ground, but was able to recover and get up and get a foot in while Chaka thought about his options. Just too indecisive, wasn't he? Had Martinelli on his left-hand side, he's thinking of feeding it to, took a touch, could have got a shot off took another touch and Diaz did well making the, the block Manchester City step forward City have lost their last three matches away from home but winning here and there's a there's a foul there brought back actually for a free kick to Arsenal Jack Grealish uh, free kick to Manchester City Jack Grealish caught and uh, here's the change for Arsenal and it is Martinelli who's coming off and Trossard coming on with Matt Upson for 15 minutes to play Trossard comes on for his his fifth appearance for Arsenal yeah I'm, I'm with you John in that I expected that a little bit sooner in this game Martinelli has been pretty quiet in this second half especially I think he has been for three or four games which is to be expected he's a young player but if you remember though Trossard caused problems for Manchester City Massively. in the FA Cup match Massively. What, 19 days ago yep. scored on Saturday yep he's been impressive really impressive twice coming on off the bench and in his game in the FA Cup so you know I think that he's fully deserved of minutes on the pitch I just thought he would I thought we would see him a little bit sooner
Uh, Jack Grealish is going to be taken off once he's received treatment here. There's a bit of concern about Grealish as well, who uh, has had this run in the team, scored the goal tonight, could be the winner. He's helped up to his feet and will actually leave the pitch on the far side and Phil Foden will make his return, having not played in the last four matches, came on as a substitute on Sunday and now comes on as a substitute here in the match against the league leaders. The soon-to-be former league leaders with this scoreline of Arsenal 1, Manchester City 2 and Foden has gone to replace Grealish on the far side, on the left-hand side for Manchester City. So, uh, Manchester City, they'll be involved in Champions League action next midweek. Their match at Nottingham Forest, by the way, is our Saturday 3 o'clock commentary this uh, coming weekend. And then next week, we'll have commentary on their match, their first leg against RB Leipzig. Still nil-nil between Borussia Dortmund and Chelsea in the Sports Extra commentary. Uh, Bristol City won, Wigan won. Ashley Fletcher's equalised for Sean Maloney's side. Manchester City taking their time over this throw in and Kyle Walker who is on a yellow card eventually takes it downfield it goes but Saliba will play it across to Ramsdale so Arsenal conceding goals a glaring error in the first half from Tommy Asu to give it to De Bruyne and in the second Gabriel passing the ball to, to Manchester City admittedly near the halfway line they still had a lot to do but they did it and they were all over them and it was classic Manchester City and here they come again Foden into the action Foden crossing to the near post but patted down by Ramsdale Matt Upson. yeah it was such a bad area to give the ball away wasn't it from Gabriel tries a pass and you just know that when you turn the ball over in that area of the pitch with the, the players that Manchester City already have in advanced positions the moment that's turned over with the sloppy pass they've just got Haaland making that run which he did it's a simple slipped ball in behind and then you're on the back foot but really good team collective goal from City really unselfish play from Haaland to see his teammates in a stronger position and just the way they offloaded the ball was absolutely spot on ball downfield from Edison and it's cushion pass over the top for Foden but Tommy Asu was able to get there first ahead of the England man back to Ramsdale now Saliba on the edge of the box Saliba forward towards Chaka and now Gabriel carrying it up towards the halfway line. Chaka scoops it to the left hand side to Zinchenko. Trossard making the run down into the full back position. Trossard, Akanji's gone there with him. Trossard plays it in field and then forward from Chaka again. It's bounced a little fortunately to Zinchenko. Trossard oh. is caught by Walker. Trossard goes down. Referee Taylor says no. There's no interest in a penalty there and the ball's in the hands of Edison. It's a clever little lob ball oh, on the inside from Zinchenko to Trossard. Oh, I think Trossard goes down yeah. far too easily. He does. i tell you what though, he makes a meal of it. it it's Walker, I mean, it's perfect. There's not enough contact, is there, to knock him over, but it was a fraction away from mm. Carl Walker really contacting him. It was oh. just the wrong side. Uh, Saliba claims he's fouled by Haaland, and he was, otherwise Haaland would have been away just a nudge while Saliba was jumping for it but yeah it, I mean it was close it was a close thing but that that well, just not enough contact from from Walker on Trossard one for the simulation game there John Sunday night 6 or 6 with Chris and Robbie Savage all bouncing towards the edge of the Arsenal penalty area just over 10 minutes to go 10 minutes to our uh, for Arsenal to to rescue something from this otherwise They'll be second tonight and the Manchester City will be top. Trossard back to Zinchenko. Rolls it in field to Jorginho. Now out to the right hand side to Tomiyasu. And then Arsenal go back to Saliba. Jorginho takes possession, plays it over the top from Ketia, but Akanji is able just to come across and just block his, his run. And it was over his head anyway and bouncing through to Edison this this will be quite a victory for Manchester City but still still 10 minutes plus there'll be plenty of added time as well to be played at the end of this match and Arsenal are going to make a, another series of changes I can see Vieira is getting ready to to come on down there long and forward for Manchester City Haaland heads it on but it will bounce through to 
goalkeeper Ramsdale. So De Bruyne and Grealish with the goals tonight. Uh, Huddersfield had down to, to 10 men in their match. Uh, William Bo Boyle's been sent off. Uh, it's still Stoke City 1, Huddersfield 0. And Blackpool have equalised. Swansea 1, Blackpool 1, Sonny Carey for Mick McCarthy's side. Here's Gundogan, 25 yards out. Another goal for Manchester City now will win it. De Bruyne plays it back. Hard turns and shoots! It's 3-1! And that has finished the deal for Manchester City here at Arsenal tonight. The champions will come out on top. And it is Haaland who scored his 32nd goal of the season. Arsenal 1, Manchester City 3. And that must be it for Arsenal. Their first Premier League defeat of the season here on their home ground and they are going to lose the top spot to the champions. Yeah, game set match to Manchester City, that's why their champions flex the muscles in the second half. I think they've been excellent for Arsenal, shaded the first half, they've been devastating in the final third. De Bruyne, really clever and aware. It's a well-worked goal from Manchester City. The ball fed to De Bruyne. He has that great awareness, but what feet from Haaland. Eight yards out at an angle. Not an easy one to take, but left foot. Just a, a quick touch with his left foot and then knows exactly what he wants to do. Goes across Ramsdale into the far side netting. It's a wonderful finish from Haaland. Talked in the first half, Matt, about the Arsenal centre-halves playing him well, but yeah, that was top quality centre-forward play that. Yeah, it really was. I mean, the first two we can talk about mistakes, but there's no real mistake in that one. It's just about top quality football for Manchester City. The run from De Bruyne, the pass, the ability to get his head up at the byline. And like you said, Chris, the cushion of the left foot touch was incredible. Ball played over the top. Odegaard with a chance on the edge of the area shoots, but it's blocked by a defender on the edge of the penalty area. Arsenal have made a couple of changes. Uh, Vieira and Ben White have come on for Tomiyasu and Granit Xhaka. So 3-1 uh, down Arsenal now in the last 10 minutes. But attacking, Vieira with a cross to the near post, headed away by a jumping Akanji. Comes back to Trossard, square from him. Jorginho thought about a shot, but Haaland was able to come across. Haaland was able to get a touch on it and then it's bounced out of play for a throw into Arsenal on the left-hand side. So, what a night for Manchester City. Winning here by three goals to one now. And underlining their credentials as the champions. Let's get the latest on the Champions League match tonight involving Chelsea and go to Germany and John Bennett. It's Borussia Dortmund nil, Chelsea nil, but it's all Chelsea's second half and Rhys James has just forced a brilliant save from the Borussia Dortmund goalkeeper with a free kick from just outside the box. Borussia Dortmund nil, Chelsea nil. Swansea City back in front against Blackpool, Callum Connolly with a second goal for Swansea. Arsenal coming forward, but I sense the Arsenal fans in here and the, and the ground, the Emirates Stadium, absolutely full to the Gunnels this evening. The, the home supporters, many of them did turn to the exits, or a handful of them turned to the exits when that third Manchester City goal went in. But Odegaard getting the ball down, playing it in field towards Jorginho, then back to Odegaard, right side of the penalty area. Odegaard trying to pull it across, took a deflection into the path of Rodri, who was able to clear it away. And, uh, and Arsenal lose possession. Haaland is up against Saliba, he's on the left wing. Haaland still going comes in field and then gets a deflection off uh, Ben White out of play shrugs off Ben White and it's a throw in to Arsenal 10 yards inside their own half so he's got on the score sheet tonight Haaland and, and it was a brilliant change of feet and Haaland provided by De Bruyne for the sixth time in the Premier League this season the sixth assist from De Bruyne to Haaland he still had plenty to do but the change of feet from right Left to right was lightning fast, and what was he? Probably eight, nine yards out. Hit the shot before you knew it almost, and it was into the bottom corner. Yeah, because he really had to adjust his body, and just looking at the replay here, he had to just have a little soft touch with his left foot, because the, the balls ran all the way across his body, and he's controlled it right at the end of where he can do, and he's just checked it back onto his right foot with his touch while he's putting the brakes on from making the run into that position. So to do all that in one motion for such a big fella does tell you a little bit something about how good his feet are. 
Well, the finish was great. And he is now conceding a free kick. It's his first goal in four matches. That's, that's his longest run. Three matches without a goal it's is a his drought. longest run for Manchester City this season. And uh, his first goal since the hat-trick against Wolves. And of course, another one in the Premier League, so that clicks up to 26 goals for him in the Premier League now this season. Gundogan has given the ball away, Zinchenko, Jorginho plays it square, Odegaard turns his man, Foden comes in with a challenge, Ben White has a shot but that hits the, the back of Ruben Diaz and bounces away over there into the, the Manchester City left fullback area. Kept in play by Saka, but the mood, the atmosphere has completely changed now. The, you feel like, from certainly from where we're sitting here, that there is an accepting that it's not going to be Arsenal's night tonight. It's quiet in there now, isn't it? Other than the Manchester City fans, even Mikel Arteta, his body language, they know that third goal, that was the one which put this game to rest. I've got to say, second half, I think Manchester City have had a have had real control. They've addressed the situation at left back. Nick has gone out there and Saka hasn't been so effective. And it's just about seeing it through. And I don't think Manchester City have been at their very best this season but they are finding a way and this is ominous for the rest of the league now yeah it's been an interesting match hasn't it from that point of view it's not like the manchester united game here or or, or arsenal's win at tottenham this has been a this has been a top two tussle hasn't it between yep. the sides tactical battle but in the end you know it, the importance has been written across this match tonight manchester city knowing that to win this would, would be such a big statement and that's what they're doing. I mean it certainly has impacted since Saki's gone to left back. I mean Saka hasn't really been able to get too much space over on that far side. You can't make two mistakes in a game like this John. No. It's just, just not possible. Well as they always say mistakes in the Premier League you'll pay for them but certainly when it comes to the very top matches and that's what this is now Arsenal contesting the title you make mistakes in matches like this against opponents like Manchester City and it's almost inevitable that you will be made to pay which they have been so De Bruyne, Grealish and Haaland, De Bruyne's off by the way Calvin Phillips has come on so that is just an attempt I'm sure for Manchester City to, to keep what they've got this two goal cushion Arsenal will still have a match in hand on Manchester City but they've still got to go to the Etihad Stadium in April that game is due to be played Arsenal with it on the right hand side Saka left foot cross which is headed wide by a falling Nketiah and it's beyond the far post and behind for a goal kick to Manchester City whose supporters are buoyant many of them on on their feet away over there on the far side singing their Manchester City songs Edison's actually stayed down on the goal line whether he's got a, a problem is it cramp how, how can you have cramp John if you're a goalkeeper really just gotta say the Enkete uh, opportunity big chance that was actually he stooped ahead the ball should have hit the target should have scored in fact Saka chopped back on his left foot and really fizzed the ball in but I think he had time to actually take it on his chest do you think that's been a factor tonight I mean he's, he's had two chances you know the one in the first half yeah. as well you know from your perspective they're two good chances no Chris yeah uh, absolutely um look at 3-1 uh, uh, still Ar Arsenal would have had work to do but a big opportunity but you sort of sense the reaction within the stadium now as loads of Arsenal fans around us leaving they, they knew the game was over and that Manchester City third goal went in. So it is added time that we're into here. Five minutes of added time. I thought it might have been more than that. Still plenty of time to play in Germany. That's where John Bennett's watching Borussia Dortmund, Chelsea. Nil nil, another great chance for Chelsea. Reese James half volleyed it into the turf. Good save by Coble. Another chance for Chelsea at the back post. It's cleared away by Borussia Dortmund. Nil nil still nil nil you can hear that on sports extra uh, we'll have commentary on the closing stages here on five live as well in the championship no further goals to uh, to tell you about although i see stoke city have just gone two nil up on huddersfield jacob brown that's 10 man
Huddersfield. So uh, Stoke lead Huddersfield by two goals to nil as uh, Phil Foden stabs the ball up, taken down on the right-hand side by Bernardo Silva. And then Phillips back to Bernardo Silva again. And it is deflected out of play for a throw into Arsenal. And back to Germany and to John Bennett because... Borussia Dortmund have taken the lead against the run of play. What a goal by Karim Adeyemi. Solo goal, carrying it for almost half the field into the penalty area. Took it around the defenders, took it around the goalkeeper and a fine finish. A backflip celebration as well. It is Borussia Dortmund 1, Chelsea 0. So Chelsea in the same position that Tottenham were in at the end of the match last night. You'll hear the, uh, the second legs of those ties in full here on 5 Live as Arsenal 3-1 down in the big match between the top two which has gone Manchester City's way swung very much in their favour in the second half as Trossard takes it on the right hand side Trossard left footed ball which is landing on the roof of the net Edison leaping for it and I think he's got a touch of cramp again but it's over the top top of the net behind goal kick he's covered some ground tonight Edison isn't he <laughs> Hey Chris, maybe all those long-range passes that we were, you know, describing earlier has been great with the ball. I mean, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm bemused. How, can, how, can, how can you get cramped if you're a... <laughs> that, that must be a first. I think it'd be a first in the history what, of a football. goalkeeper getting cramped. That, that, do you know what? That must be a first. <laughs> I have my doubts. I'd love to see the distances covered. I mean, I suppose we, you know, we can get all those sort of stats, can't we? We do. Yeah. Well, get on to, get on to your mate, stat man there. He'll, he'll find that out. Uh, in the championship, still Bristol City one, Wigan one, Preston nil, Luton one, Stoke two, Huddersfield nil. As I mentioned, Swansea two, Blackpool one, Sheffield United one, Middlesbrough two, and West Brom nil, Blackburn nil. Arsenal in out of time, lots of red seats now appearing around the Emirates Stadium. Great disappointment after the great expectation tonight whether Arsenal might be able to, to stretch their lead with a win against the champions who, like them, like Arsenal, have faltered in recent weeks. But it's been decisively, certainly in the second half, yeah. Manchester City. It's now. been very flat, obviously, since that third goal. But for me, it's more about the thought of Arsenal fans of the next game and what, what's the next performance going to look like are we going to get it back on track can we see that vibrant team pulling other teams to pieces and they haven't seen that for a little while the warning signs were here on Saturday against Brentford and going into that match on Saturday at Aston Villa yeah. managed <laughs> by Unai Emery that'll be one point from the last nine available for the soon-to-be former leaders, Manchester City. Yeah, but Mikel Arteta wants two points back, doesn't he? He does. I don't think he'll get them back, Chris. Here's Phillips playing it forward. Foden turns away and then slips it out to the left-hand side where Gundogan's able to take it forward. Haaland waiting in the middle, head down. Gundogan into the penalty area. He's challenged by Saliba, referee. Taylor says good challenge and then it's put out of play on the far side incidentally if Manchester City as we expect they will win this this will be their seventh win in a row against Arsenal in all competitions home and away it'll be their 11th successive Premier League victory over Arsenal so 11 successive league wins and Arsenal Manchester City will be the first team to win seven consecutive away matches against Arsenal. So dominant, dominant Manchester City against Arsenal in recent times. And we said it would be different, perhaps, today with Arsenal, this new Arsenal under Mikel Arteta, but not so. The champions have come here to the Emirates and they have won and they've knocked Arsenal off the top of the Premier League and it's Manchester City who are there now and fittingly play ended with the ball down in that corner where all of the Manchester City fans are and Grealish runs onto the field to join in the celebrations that was a crucial goal to put Manchester City 2-1 up and Haaland who scored the third punching the air with both fists Arsenal beaten here for the first time in the Premier League this season 
by the champions 3-1 Chris Sutton Matthew Upson yeah but it's a it's a massive blow for Arsenal and you touched on at the end of the commentary John it, it's how will they recover you know they're now in second place yes they have that game in hand but I thought Manchester City were really excellent in the second half of Arsenal with a better team in the, in the first half Manchester City clinical they've flexed the muscles they've said to Arsenal we are the team to beat but for Arsenal it's about recovering on uh, on Saturday it is isn't it they need to win that game at Aston Villa yeah I, I mean I completely agree that that that's the focus it's just how they're going to go about it I mean they're a very very young team and I think like mentally it starts to get weary you start to get really challenged at this stage of the season especially when you have a team like this Manchester City group and a manager like Pep Guardiola that are just relentless in trying to hunt you down and I just feel that it's got on top a little bit they've started to make some odd, odd choices and just not manage the game and they've got really punished today by a quality team I mean Arsenal were very good in parts of that game I agree that the first half I thought they were brilliant and then second half it just the control that Manchester City had and the way they took those chances was just world class Arsenal paid for their mistakes that they made tonight and Manchester City you know you can see here it's written across the the reaction of the the players out there the Manchester City players just how significant and important this is and I see as well Pep Guardiola who's out there with him has has gone to Zinchenko gone to Alexander Zinchenko now of Arsenal long conversation between those two as well and the City players players finally turning now and heading towards us the focus is on on Haaland after he scored what was the clinching goal he's on the front cover of GQ magazine this month it'll be also on the back pages of the papers in the morning but it's a team effort from Manchester City the team that are the champions have won here at Arsenal by three goals to one